I think that no matter what pet you own, it's important to research into the common illnesses and diseases that they are prone to. That way you are going to be able to recognize the symptoms a lot easier. And when you end up going to the vet with them, you're not going to be blindsided by what the vet is talking about. And you have a little bit more insight into what they're trying to explain to you. So today I'm gonna to be talking about some of the more common health conditions hamsters are prone to. Number one, wet tail. Now this is something that you've likely already heard, maybe even before getting your hamster. Now wet tail was once used as a term to describe a specific illness caused by a bacteria called Lysonia intersolaris. This is an illness that has been found to affect only young Syrian hamsters. This is because one of the main symptoms is diarrhea, which in turn causes the hamster to have a wet tail. Nowadays, the term wet tail is actually used as a blanket term to describe any hamster with those same symptoms because there are many bacteria and illnesses that cause the same sort of symptoms as the traditional wet tail. Now keep in mind, diarrhea alone can be caused by many different things. Something as simple as feeding your hamster a new food could easily cause them to have an upset stomach leading to diarrhea. But if they are still eating, drinking, and active, they don't necessarily need medical attention unless the condition persists. But a hamster who has just come home for the first time that has diarrhea, is lethargic, isn't wanting to eat or drink, and is losing weight, needs to see a vet immediately. You may often see pet stores selling wet tail drops or they may even force you to purchase some with your hamster in order to prevent wet tail. But these drops do not treat or prevent bacterial wet tail. So it's important that if you suspect your hamster has a wet tail that you visit your local exotic vet, they likely will prescribe you with some antibiotics and depending on the severity of the case, they may also administer some fluids to rehydrate your hamster. Congestive heart failure. This is when the heart begins to weaken and when your heart begins to weaken, it no longer can pump blood as well as it used to be able to. This is something that typically happens in older hamsters. Often the symptoms are easy to miss, but if you notice your hamster seems to be more fatigued, they have more of a rapid breathing, their heartbeat is irregular, and their skin starts to have more of a blue tint, it's possible that they have congestive heart failure. Unfortunately, there is no treatment in hamsters, but your vet may be able to prescribe some medications to help manage the condition. Mites. The most common mites found in hamsters are actually already typically on a healthy hamster. This is because these mites actually serve an important purpose of breaking down organic material. And yes, humans have mites all over us as well and they do the same thing for us. Now these mites only start to become an issue when the hamster is either ill or very stressed and their body is unable to keep the number of mites down, therefore leading to an infestation. Hamsters also can be affected by tropical rodent mites and these are visible by eye. Signs of mites include inflamed, scaly, and dry skin. So if you notice your hamster is uncomfortably itching, losing hair, and their skin seems inflamed, it's best to see your local exotic vet and they will prescribe typically a topical treatment to get rid of them. Ringworm. Ringworm actually isn't what you think it is and it has nothing to do with worms. Ringworm is actually caused by a fungus. So a hamster may develop ringworm if they come in contact with an already infected animal, humans, infected bedding, or even things inside of your home that have been infected by the fungi. This fungi thrives in warm and humid environments, so it's important to keep your hamster's enclosure dry. Some hamsters may not show any symptoms at all, but typically you will notice your hamster losing patches of fur, and in these patches, they may be crusty with a red ring along the edge. If you believe your hamster has ringworm, it's important to visit your exotic vet. That way they can do a skin culture, which then can confirm if it is in fact ringworm, and then they can prescribe you with some antifungal medications. Ringworm is contagious to humans and other animals, so if you suspect your hamster has ringworm, make sure that you are thoroughly washing your hands anytime you're handling your hamster. Respiratory infections. 
Hamsters have pretty sensitive respiratory systems, so there are many things that could cause ARI, including things like unsafe beddings, like pine cedar, scented beddings, chinchilla dust, as well as if you have a safe bedding but it is really dusty, that could even cause a respiratory infection. If your hamster has a respiratory infection, you are gonna notice some discharge from their nose and possibly the eyes, as well as they are going to have very labored breathing. They also will be lethargic and likely won't be drinking much. In 2014, my dwarf hamster Pop-Tart had actually developed a respiratory infection, and in this next clip, you can actually hear what he sounded like. A respiratory infection is best treated with antibiotics prescribed by your exotic vet, and additionally, you can also use the herb thyme to help with their breathing. Urinary tract infections. The first thing we need to note is that hamsters should never bleed from their privates, even in females, as they do not menstruate like humans do. A UTI usually happens when bacteria enters the urethra and then infects the urinary tract. The signs of a UTI in a hamster may include frequent peeing, frequent drinking, as well as sometimes there is blood in the urine. Your vet typically will do a urinalysis to confirm it, and then for treatment, they often will prescribe antibiotics. Pyometra. Pyometra is an infection in the uterus, and this is typically seen in older female hamsters. There are two types of pyometra. There is open pyometra and closed pyometra. Now with open pyometra, you'll likely notice blood and pus coming from their private areas because the cervix is open. Usually because you can notice these signs faster, there is a better chance at treatment. With closed pyometra, the cervix is closed, so all of that blood and pus is going to build up within, and this may cause your hamster to have an abnormally large abdomen. And because of this, it may be harder to notice. And once a lot of people start to actually notice this, it is not diagnosed until it's in its final stages. Treatments for pyometra depend on the severity. Your vet may decide to try antibiotics or they may have to go ahead and do a spay, removing the uterus altogether. So as soon as you notice your hamster has any blood, pus, bloating, or increased drinking, it's important to visit your local exotic vet. A common issue among hamsters is lumps and bumps on the skin, which can be caused by many different factors. Starting with tumors. So a tumor is a solid mass of tissue and tumors can affect bone, skin, organs, and glands. If you notice a tumor on your hamster, it's best to get it checked by your vet. In some cases, if the tumor is not growing and it's staying the same size, your vet may opt to leave it. And in other cases, if it is continuing to grow, your vet may choose to surgically remove it. And even once a tumor is removed, there is still a chance that it could come back. Now on to cysts. A cyst is a sac that forms in the skin or in the body, and oftentimes they contain fluid, but sometimes they can contain more of a solid material. Oftentimes cysts are harmless, but if they begin to grow too large, this can obviously start to affect the hamster in many ways. Your vet can drain the cyst, but unless the cyst's sac is removed, the cyst will continue to fill up. Abscesses. A abscess is a collection of pus usually caused by a bacterial infection. Now this could happen if your hamster accidentally cuts themselves in their enclosure or if they get a wound. It really doesn't even have to be that large of a cut. Anytime you have an open wound in your skin, even if it's a tiny scratch, that can lead to possible infection if your environment isn't staying clean. If you notice an abscess on your hamster, please do not pop it yourself. Visit your vet so that they can properly drain it and administer antibiotics to treat it. Warts. These are small growths on the skin and these seem to be more common in dwarf hamsters and particularly in the ear. While a wart is usually harmless, depending on the size of it and the area that it is grown, it could cause your hamster to be uncomfortable. So talking to your exotic vet can help you determine whether or not it's right to remove it or not. 
So those are just a few of the common hamster health issues that we see. Obviously there are plenty more, but those are just the more common ones you tend to see when owning a hamster. Please remember the longer something is left untreated, the less likely they are of recovery. So it's really important to go to your vet as soon as you notice something is up. So I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.